Cook, president of the Schaefer Marine. And today we're in beautiful Monterey, California, an area just rich with California history. Here at the marina, and we're going to be installing a 700 snap furler on a Catalina 27. So what we're going to show you is what it took to install this furler on this boat. You'll find it, if you get the help of a couple of friends, this whole thing should go really smoothly and easily, and I don't think there's anything complicated that you won't be able to handle. In preparation for the installation of the furler, you'll need to assemble the following tools. A hacksaw, a 50-foot measuring tape, diagonal cutters, small vice grips, a crescent wrench, Phillips screwdriver, a marking pin, a roll of rigging tape, a pair of channel lock pliers with the jaws covered with ringing tape. A small Allen wrench is also included in the kit and is provided for the clamp on the foil. The Snap Furl 700 comes complete in a UPS shippable box. There are two coils of extrusion that snap together over the head stick. In addition, there's an upper swivel and a lower drum unit and a torque tube that covers over the existing turnbuckle. A small plastic package contains the small parts that are needed to complete the installation. The extrusions have a front and back. The aft extrusion has a groove for the sail. The lower end has been machined away to fit into the sail feed at the top of the torque tube. We don't want you to cut the end of this extrusion at this end, and to cut to fit, you take material off the top. The first step before assembling the furler is to uncoil the extrusions. Be careful on this as they're under tension and you do it one clip at a time on the tie wraps. Moving carefully, get an assistant to lay the coil down and step on one end carefully and then start unrolling it. If it's allowed to rest on the dock, it'll start uncoiling and be much easier to install over the head stick. Let the foil rest before attempting to get on with the installation. The first step is to determine the length of the head stay and the cut length of the foil. To do this, close the turnbuckle to make the head stay as short as possible. This will help prevent the top swedge stud from contacting the top of the foil. Next, use a small piece of the two foils cut from the top end of the extrusion. Assemble these two sections of foil over the head stay and tape together. Tape the jib halyard to the foil sections and a tape measure to the bottom of the foil sections. Pull the halyard up with the tape measure until it stops. Record the dimension to the bottom of the threaded T-bolt in the bottom turnbuckle. Deduct 18 and a half inches from this dimension to obtain the cut length of the foil. In our example, the measured distance was 34 feet 6 and a half inches. Deducting 18 and a half inches gives us a foil cut length at 33 feet even for the torque tube and the drum. So here in an example, an end view of the two extrusions. This is the forward extrusion, which does not have the sail groove in it, and this is the aft extrusion, which does have the sail groove in it. This has the teeth that lock into the grooves on either side of this extrusion. So they go together like this, and with a little bit of pressure, they snap together pretty easily and you can hear it clicking as it goes down. Really what's forming is a one-piece extrusion with a sail groove back here, and this is the hollow inside for the head stay itself. It doesn't need lubrication, it won't corrode, it forms its own bearing against the wire. With the extrusions cut to length, we now get it all started by snapping the two extrusions together over the head stay. The next step is to put the top cap on right here so you don't have to do it later and the two small screws go into the front side of the extrusion, which is here, is aft at the moment, and get screwed in. And this will keep the extrusion locked together as you do the rest of the snapping, and keeps them uh, at the same height up the foil. So now that we have the foil started, we're going to snap the furls together. What we've done here is taken a set of channel locks and put some protective tape on there so we don't mark up the foils. And we simply start pushing it up, and you'll hear it click and snap together. 
and you just make it. You can see it when it actually clicks that the, the foil, the join line will be very tight and the extrusions will snap very cleanly to each other. So with your assistant on the dock, just feeding these in and keeping them torqued around so they'll get lined up with the teeth and the grooves, just continue to snap them together. So now's the time we remove the head stay. The mast has been supported and we're pulling the two cotter pins out, setting them aside, and then we're going to unwind the head stay. The unit is held in place on the turnbuckle toggle by a U-shaped clip. This is shipped from the factory installed. The U-clip installs on the turnbuckle toggle and becomes the foundation for the system. So first we remove that because we're going to put it back in after we slide the torque tube and the drum onto the head stay itself. And this is the U-shaped clip right here coming out. And that creates a real good investment cast stainless steel foundation for the unit. This is the upper swivel and this goes on before we slide the drum and torque tube on. And as you can see, there's actually a small mark that says up. It's important that the swivel go this way, not this way. So this is designed to hold the top of the sail. As the sail rolls up, this is going to roll around. This is going to stay stationary to the halyard. And this is what allows the system to roll up smoothly and still use the conventional halyard. So this goes on the foil before the drum unit is installed. And both of these get installed when we remove the head stay now that the foil is on the head stay. Okay, so now we've, we've removed the cotter pin from the head stay pin. We're going to remove the head stay toggle. Now this becomes what we assemble everything over. And as I said, we're going to put the swivel with the large portion up on first. It goes right on like this. And slide it up the foil. And have some, your assistant hang on to it for a minute. And then we're going to take the torque tube and we're going to remove the clamp. The clamp is going to clamp onto this uh, foil and we're going to take it apart with a small Allen wrench. There's four screws in the front side of it. Okay, now moving these captive right. fasteners. So you can see the fasteners stay in the unit and allow you to get this started on the, on the um, foil when you're clamping it back in. Actually what we want to do is this is the last piece that we're going to use. So we're going to push this up and hang on to that and we're going to reattach the head stay. That's basically the only thing we have going. So we have this little fitting here, which is the U-clip, and that goes on, and we can reattach the head stay. And now we can retension the head stay. A very firm head stay. You're trying to put some tension in these rigs. Anything you do that can get the rig tension tighter up to a reasonable limits is a good thing to do. That helps um, the ease of furling, makes everything work better. And now we're replacing cotter pins into the head stay to lock it. So now what we can do is we have our U-clip here. We're going to lower the torque tube down onto that and replace the fasteners. And that mounts the bottom of the stainless steel race into the um, U-clip that's now in the turnbuckle. Now we go back up and we take the clamp mechanism and the little Allen wrench comes in the kit. And we hold the extrusions up until it lines up. So the clamp mechanism has several details in it. It has a shelf here which supports the extrusion so they don't drive down on top of a turnbuckle swedge stud. We have a keyway here that's molded into this part. It goes into the milled portion of the extrusion at the bottom here. So that lines everything up. And we bring it up a little bit and when the fasteners start lining the fasteners up on this get our first one started. As you're tightening this up, taking the slack out of them, go around them several times at all the fasteners, one at a time. You can see what's going on. This is going to be now the, the groove into the sail for feeding the sail up into the extrusion. And then these gaps on both sides should be about the same. There's clearance on this and you should, the gap should be about the same. That means the parts are aligned. 
and they're tightening up and just make sure all the four of the fasteners are nice and firm. Okay, the last part of the installation is we have three shackles. Two are used on the upper swivel, one is used at the tack fitting. One small but very important detail of all furler installations, regardless of manufacturer, is to look at the angle of the halyard in relation to the angle of the headstay. You can see what the problem is here. If the halyard is intersecting the masthead at a critical angle that leads like this, there's a very good chance that as the sail turns, you're going to get a thing called halyard wrap, where the halyard doesn't have enough resistance and it starts wrapping. And then once it's wrapped, it jams, and we end up with a possible damage to the headstay. This is the common problem with a lot of systems, and it's very easy to prevent by the addition of this little clip, which comes standard in our kit. This is called a pullback device. It's a little stamped metal flared kit. And this will go against the mast up at the top like this and create this angle away from the headstay angle. And that gives the swivel the mechanical advantage it needs to stay put as the furler is being rolled. It's a very important issue. It's where most of the problems with all of these double swivel and uh, drum systems come from. And we really highly recommend that you not only inspect, but you install this to create this angle, the separation angle between the halyard and the headstay. And we're going to do that right now and install one up at the masthead. It's the one trip we have to do to the mast, top of the mast, in a standing installation. And uh, you get some friends again and get a bosun's chair and climb safely. And it's just uh, two fasteners at the top of the head of the mast. And it'll prevent a lot of potential problems in the furler. The installation of the furler is nearly complete. We've added our furling retrieval line and pre-wound it onto the drum. And it's led back to the cockpit through stanchion blocks that were manufactured by Schaefer, which lead on the outside of the stanchion. We've made sure that the forward lead is on a plane to the middle of the drum so that the furling line will roll up smoothly without any kinks or overlaps and won't chafe for the top or bottom plate. Now we're going to feed the sail end of the stainless steel feeder and bring it up to the swivel and shackle it on. And then we're going to raise the sail. So we've put the whole system together now, the installation's complete, the sail's been mounted on the furler, we rolled it up initial time. One good thing to do now before you take the boat sailing is to unfurl it, check the jib leads, make sure that the leads are correct and the sail is um, luffing correctly, and then refurl the sail, make sure that you have enough line on the drum so that when it's all spooled up, there's several rolls of rope on the furler pack. The sail stays on the furler, rolls up and is protected from the sun with a cover on the back leech of the sail. And you don't have to put anything down below. So after a day of sailing, it's always helpful to look at a few security issues before you leave the boat. Even though we've rolled up our furler and we have the sheets tied back and we've tied off our control line, it's always good to add a little piece of uh, scrap rope and make a uh, quick hitch around one of the stanchions so that if anybody came aboard to service the boat and they accidentally retied the dock lines or untied the furling line, there's no chance that the furler will unfurl and the sail would flog before it could get the attention of somebody on the dock that might damage the sail. So just this additional little piece of line is a great insurance policy against damaging the system. I hope this video has helped you understand the advantages of jib furlers in general and the specific advantages of the Schaefer system. We also